uh, early October on a Sunday morning at about 10 o'clock, and uh, I'm at my favorite spot in the Berkshires. And uh, I come here very often uh, at different times of day and different seasons because I'm just fascinated by the, the changes that take place in nature, by the, 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 the different colors as the sun moves across the sky, the values change, the colors change, and uh, the, the challenge of capturing this on, on paper uh, is really very exhilarating. People uh, ask me sometimes when I'm painting, they come over and they say, well, what, what do you think about uh, when, when you're painting? And uh, 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 do you talk to yourself? And uh, I said, well, I, I do, but, but just quietly. But I, maybe for this, what I'll do is I'll talk to myself out loud. I'll talk out loud. This is banana skin mat. I'll begin, and I'll begin with a drawing. And my subject matter is the the little uh, house on the pond. And uh, the question is, where do I put it? Am I going to put it somewhere here on the canvas, on my paper? And uh, I don't want to put it in the middle or too close to a side. So I'll put it off a little to one side. Maybe I'll use that famous idea of golden section, which I can explain it briefly. Uh, I'll half this paper along this line, divide it into four parts, half each one of these again, and half each one of these again, so that I have eight parts. And uh, the golden section ratio is three to five. So if I come over three uh, on this line, this is my golden section of this long line. And uh, I can do the same on the side view, half, half again, half each one, so I have eight parts and come down three parts, and where these two intersect is my golden section, uh, which is pretty much uh, a different distance to every side, total variety, which is what I'm seeking for my main interest and where I'll put the most contrast. So I'll put my, my little house right in that place somewhere here and my reflection of the house in that place. So that's important. Then uh, I'm going to have a foreground I'm going to have a foreground, uh, maybe I'll make the foreground fairly large. I have to have it large enough because I'm going to put some trees on it. And these lines uh, I can erase later, so I'm not particularly worried about them. But I'll make them dark enough so you can see them. And this will be my area of the water. So this area is bigger, this is smaller. So I try also to have, just like I have a variety of spaces here for my golden section, which is three to five, I can have almost like a three to five ratio here, so that these are not the same size. We're looking for variety. Um, then I have a field coming down through. And let's put the little house in anyway, right here. This is my golden section, half, half, right about here. I watch out for the middle, too. I'm going to put a little tree next to the house, so maybe I'll put the tree right in here. And you remember that we can erase these lines. So I don't make the house too big. And it has a little separate section. These are little triangles and boxes, basic shapes. And uh, there's a little house there, maybe. Let's see, this one has a little window up here. And this is probably the little shack for the, for the goose. There's some geese that come around here every so often. So that little shack. And then I'm going to put a tree, maybe, instead of taking all those trees that are there, I'm going to just be very selective and maybe pick out one tree 
that kind of hangs over the house a little bit. And there'll be bushes in front of the house. And these bushes will be reflected in, in the water. This is the water line here. So this, this will be the reflection. I'll bring that down exactly into the water. And the little, little shack in the water also. And forms get a little bit elongated in the water, so I'll stretch them out just a little. And the second part here. And a little reflection, reflection of the tree. Just roughly, because I can change it. Uh, then the field coming down through the house. And going off here, getting small. And it'll have little bits of foliage along the water's edge. <coughs> uh, I'm going to have uh, the, the line of the trees across the top of the sky here, coming down. It's a little higher here. And it dips a little by the house, maybe some. Back over here, if you've got way over at the side, you see there might be a little bit of a hint of a of a mountain there. There used to be anyway. So we'll put that in. And these are little like little triangles coming up here. There'll be some trees along the edge of the field, little warm spots that are repeated. And maybe way up in the field there's a little tree here, so we'll allow for that. And we're gonna put some of these trees. Maybe, uh, maybe I'll use this big pine tree and uh, we'll put, decide where we're going to put that. We'll put one here, and then we could use that little double tree, maybe over here. And then uh, we want these trees at different levels. I'll put over here, I could use the single tree or this big one, but maybe it would be interesting, uh, I could take that group of three trees and move that over. So we won't copy it exactly the way it is. We'll We'll sort of compose a little bit. And then we'll come out with this big tree, maybe put it about here. And we watch the space division so that if you put a mat on this, that it won't be the same size as the tree itself. So we keep this over a little bit. And we'll decide we'll lean it just a little. It'll come this way. Keep it nice and big. And then we'll put the double tree let them, let them spiral a little bit here so they're not parallel. We avoid the parallel. And then we come off on this direction. This one will kind of go up into the sky and kind of lead down to the house. And the little branches will alternate off from that. And this one, will have, we'll take the group of three trees over here and we'll put this at a different space division. Let's see, we don't want to come like that. So we'll maybe put this one here. And these are a little straighter, but they will kind of lean. This one will lean towards the house a little, somewhere in there. So this is back here. This one's a little more forward. This is a little more forward. OK, that's about it. And there'll be some shrubbery here. We can take the shrubbery that's there kind of leading in, stopping the eye from going out of the picture. And perhaps that's enough for the beginning for the drawing. So we'll go right ahead. In preparation, uh, so I can move along quickly, I'll wet my paints very quickly, swing the brush across these so that we get them wet without picking up any paint. And I'll be using this, these colors. Maybe I'll drop a little extra water in there. OK. Then I'll start, and I'll wet the area. Instead of wetting the whole paper, I'll wet them by area. So let, let's keep some tissue handy, too. And since I'm working vertically, I have to watch out for these puddles running all over the place. Maybe I'll dry this brush just a little and reclaim this area. Just make sure it's wet. OK. And the sun is coming from this side, from my left. In other words, um, from the east and moving across the sky. I use just a little phthalo blue in the sky up here.
this here a little bit. And then as uh, we go towards the sun, I'll have a little bit of warm in the sky. Maybe even if it turns a little bit green, it'll reflect some of the greens below. I'll catch these little drips. And low sky will be a little bit warmer. I'll put just a hint of alizarin in the low sky just so it's not all the same. And maybe I'll just go back into that blue so it'll just be a little darker for the high sky. But now we consider the, tree, the trees going through there too. So we'll, we'll soften this just a little. Maybe we can soften these edges just slightly so this won't run too much. And maybe, maybe I'll want some, some lights up in here just a little. I can get the feeling of clouds just by using a Kleenex, just a little bit. Okay, there we go. Try to make them different, and they're sort of moving horizontally across the sky. Okay. And I'll go across the water, same way wet it first, and repeat my colors. The blue sky I'll repeat in the water, just a little bit of the yellow in the water, and a hint of the alizarin. in the near water. And then I'll just blot out the whites of my building that are facing the sun and just a little bit of that tree reflected in the water. Pick up my dripping parts here, just a little. And, uh, okay, and we'll let that dry just a little bit. We can go back into that later. While that's drying, drying, I'll, I'll put in this uh, mass of, of forest. And again, we'll wet it. So we'll wet it all the way through. And I'll go around the house I must remember to put that little chimney in. I'll go around that tree. That'll be a light tree. And I'll make sure I have all my paper wet. I could leave a little dryness along the bottom. Uh, sort of a little dam against that so it won't run down in. I guess that's enough. And then I can begin to put in my, uh, my tops of my trees. And I'll put a little cobalt blue for the distant trees, maybe a little cad yellow, a lot of cobalt blue, just a little bit of orange. Now I'll make a puddle because I'm going to have to have a lot of, and I can also soften that burnt sienna just slightly. Use that. And then we go along this top. And these trees are far away. Maybe you need a little more contrast. Try to make them all different. And I can wash across here pretty fast. Try to get a little more blue because they're far away. But blue-green, so get a little yellow into that. And there's a little more color now than usual. The tree's going to go through here. I can bring this one up a little more. And down, try to make them all different heights. a puddle going here so I have plenty of water so I don't have to spend too much time. And a little more blue. Let me try this other brush. It's a little heavy so I think I'll go back to that hockey brush and a little more puddle. And we're going low down here a little bit, getting lower, a little more of the cobalt blue back here. Got to go around this tree. We were going to save that one, so I'll blot that out. And something going through here. These are far away, these trees. So a little bluer. In fact, 
Gee, holy smoke. All right, we'll just pull, stop that from running. And we've got a mountain back there too, so let's put that in, in the distance. Maybe a little extra part of that. Get rid of that white up against there. We don't want to go up in the middle, so let's, let's put a little heavier tone in some of this in the foreground, just so it, you can see some contrast of value against that. And then we'll come down with some, some warm, remember our line of our trees is down here, but it's getting into, quite into fall, so we can put some of these warm trees, little clumps of them along the edge of the field. And we go back further here. Try to make little changes as you go along. There's some yellow ones in there, too. We have this yellow one, too. So we get that in now. It's overhanging the house a little bit, maybe. And let's get behind it with some cool, again, the cobalt blue, but not too wet. We're going to get a lot of running through here. And along the edge, there's some, some little bits here. Let's cut around the house, keep it coolish behind the house. It's going to have a red roof on the house, but maybe a few warm spots over here, too. We're carrying these warms across. This is the light side, so it faces the, the sun. So there will be uh, some warms up close, certainly. And maybe little interlocks, which we're going to have in the field. And this is going to run through and around the house, so it cut out the shape of the house. Try not to lose those lights. Maybe a little chimney here somewhere. Well, we'll get that later. Okay, and this comes through. Maybe a little bit of interlocks along the field. Touch the frame line to get a little more solidity. Okay, get rid of these light spots here. We gotta get out of there now. Maybe just a hint of some verticals, so we won't have to go back in too much. Like a theme of little verticals. Even some of these you can later on go back and get side planes. A lot of that's going to be covered up though by, by the trees and the foliage. This is a little darker than the last time I did this, but I think this is all right. Okay. And maybe I can do this a little side plane on the on the uh, on the mountain. Or I can go back in when it's dry. Just a little tone here. Let's see if this is too wet. I should get out of there quick. Maybe just a little bit of tone here. Just so there's something there. So it's not just flat. Okay, uh, I didn't want this. I'll get rid of that drip. That will be our field. Okay, well that's enough to be in the background pretty much, so we'll leave that. And next I can go in the foreground. I'll wet the foreground first. I could leave a little bit of a of a dam here if I want. I could also let it run in because it's, this is pretty well dry now. I could test that with the heel of my hand. That's pretty well dry there now, I think. Okay. And I can sort of reclaim that, just dry it just a little bit. Now that I have it all wet. One more time. And then first I'm going to put a light color on there, maybe, maybe a yellow, for the sunlight. Get some paint here. I could clean this palette just in here just a little bit. And then I'm going to have some cad yellow here. That was a really yellow that I put on first, and just a little bit of cad yellow. And 
get behind this thing here. And then just a little bit of burnt sienna in here, just a little bit. Some cobalt blue where there'll be shadows later. And these trees and the cobalt blue running it through, trying to keep it moving obliquely through. And little shadows from something outside. And this blue is repeating the blue up above. This is just a basic wash to start with. So, and under the house, we, we can have just some little darkening here. But let's try to keep the, keep the light and vary the strokes. Okay. If this is dry, I could put in just hints of foliage, maybe a little yellow ochre bushes o over the water. But I think before I do much of that, I think I'll wait and put some more darks in the water, some horizontals. So I think next I'll go to the little house. And I'll take a little flat brush. And uh, I'll take a little cobalt blue and just a hint of cad yellow, the cad orange, sort of a compliment, just to neutralize it. And just do a little bit of the side plane of the house. And that roof is a little longer than and I made it here in the drawing, so I'll correct that on here. And this will be my side plane. And I'll put some foliage in front of it. This time, just a little. Side plane and side plane on this roof too. Again, I, I can redraw it just a little. vertical. Okay. I'm going to leave that. And then we're going to put the reflection of that. It'll be a little more neutral. Keep it tissue handy in case I make it too bright. Neutralize it even a little more. And keep it right underneath so it's and make it stretched out a little and it blurs and this comes underneath. I think it's blurry. It even has little lines breaking into it. So it's not too perfect. And you can even soften it just a little. Just a little bit of plane change accent on that on that blue here where it turns, just so it's not flat blue. And maybe I'll lot it just slightly. Okay, the little uh, goose house, or whatever it is, the little shack there, will have a side plane, so I'll put a little, little dark side plane on that with a little burnt sienna. And just a little echo of that in the water. A little bit warmer. What happens is that with these, we must remember that the darks get lighter and the lights get darker in reflections. And, and also the forms get stretched out a little bit. Okay, that's enough to start that. Okay, I'll clean the palette just a little bit. And uh, I want to put some horizontals in the water. Now I have a chance, so let me take a little one inch flat and keep the tissue handy. And I'll make a little puddle of the cobalt blue and run that through the water here. Because I'm going to run that right through the trees and try to grade it as it goes back. A little, with some through the house too, through here. Little small ones back further. out of the picture. Maybe just a little alizarin reflected in the water too. There's a little bit of darkness here. And a little bit as we go back along the water's edge. That maybe is enough to start it out. Make sure the near ones are a little, little bigger and they get smaller as they go back. That gives a little bit of glisten to the water. Okay. 
clean the brush. And maybe I'll run in that uh, field now, just a little bit here with, uh, I'll wet it first again. Keep tissue handy, so. I'm Okay, we'll wet it straight through. Foliage by the house. Run it all the way through wet. Actually, a small area like this, you wouldn't even have to wet the whole thing. And there'll be some reflection in the water, too, so let it run right down into the water. And this is my water's edge somewhere here, so I'm going to have to keep some of that. Okay. Maybe just a little more light over towards the sun in that field. Okay, we'll leave this for now. I love watercolor. There's nothing quite like it. Nothing quite like the beauty of its luminosity. Okay, now I'll go back to the house, and maybe I'll do the little, uh, to the roof. And any of these little uh, variations, I can always go back again later. Maybe just a little darker. So we got the long roof of the house. I'll bring that down, oh, down to the blue. And I'm going right over my drawing lines because I, I don't necessarily have to follow them. I'm going to erase them later with a nice kneaded eraser. I can let that tree hang over the roof a little bit on this. A little bit of an interlock there. And drag this along. Let it run down just a little. Okay. There's a chimney too here somewhere. Maybe I'll put that in just to indicate it, the dark side of it with a little burnt sienna and cobalt blue. Let's see, I'll put, not right over this line, I'll put it off to the side a little bit. Well, it's going to run down, so we'll leave that for now. That's about where I want it. And I can re echo the, the red in the water a little bit here. A little bit lighter, so it's too strong. The color width gets diluted in the water, so it's not quite as strong. Again, it'll sort of stretch out a little bit. And we reverse the direction, so it's kind of blurred here. And a little break, breaking into it, so it's not just perfect. Try not to repeat the same size of strokes. Okay. This is still wet, so we stay out of there for now. We want to echo that uh, reflection of the tree in the water, too. That water is quite dry now. Yeah, the water's dry, so I can put some of the foliage in now. I can use my little hockey brush, maybe, put in just a little bit of the foliage. I'll start out with the lighter value. And I'll drop in while it's wet, a little dark on the side away from the source of light. Touch the frame line. Later on, I'll put some, some twigs coming in there. 
a little bit of interlock here so it's not too flat. And along the shore, I'll have some little foliage. But the, I have to think the fact that this is fall, so we're getting some warms in here. So we have to get some of the little redness taking place in here too, so. So it's basically a yellow green with little leaves that have turned from the We'll get through that, sort of a way to lead the eye through with some of these little forms. Again, on the other side, I'm gonna have another bush here to sort of stop the eye, but I'll make it a different sized bush than the bush over there. But again, I'll we'll touch the frame line. And I'll have a little shadow in there. Converging lines a little bit, some red in there because of the fall, some yellow. We can put a lot of that yellow in later. A lot of this is going to be later on. And I think as I should get into the house again, some of the detail of the house, I'll take a small brush and just a little bit of uh, cobalt blue and alizarin. I get a little bit of violet so I can redraw the house just a little. And we have a little roof here too. I don't want to forget that on that little goose house. So we can do some of this detail up close. And I can, that down plane will be dark along the edge of the roof. I can have a couple little and prominent darks here, but not one solid line. I'll sort of lose and find that edge. And I'll go along this edge. I think that's dry enough. I can do it. Pick it up real dark right here at the corner, maybe. This will be a side plane on the chimney. I think that's dry enough. I can go back in there. Bring that peak of the roof down. Well, anyway. There's a little window up here. Back a little further. So the space is bigger, that space is smaller. We have a little side window here too. And here in the shadow there's a little, little hint of a window, but I'll keep that very subtle. Quite subtle. But in it, I'll have some dark in it, so it's not all one tone. Something here. In other words, I try not to make a dark that's isolated. So I have little windows here. And then uh, there's probably a door here somewhere, right behind this clump of bushes. And another window over here. And I'll bring that edge up a little stronger, maybe. Probably also the fact that the sun is over on the left, although it's changing gradually now. But I'll keep in mind the original time that I started, which was at about 10 o'clock. And uh, I'll have a cast shadow from that building onto the second building. So I'll have sort of a violet shadow. All right. That should bring the attention to the, I'll use this dark around a little bit. And we'll reflect that in the water. Huh. All right. taking little liberties with these forms, but we're not copying what we see. So let's say now, uh, water's edge, kind of lost that a little here, but it's somewhere in here. Edge of the water, maybe it varies a little as we go along here. Get some of it here. There's probably a little inlet here. 
Let me use a little bigger brush so I can begin to make that edge of the water a little more prominent. So because we want to reflect some of these bushes here. All right, so it's here. It's kind of a little inlet here. This is our field. So we have some foliage along the edge of the field too. Some little bushes here. And reflected in the water, just a little. Maybe I have to raise the level here of this uh, water's edge has to be up here and there's going to be like an inlet here. And these, these trees will have side planes. It'll be dark. These little bushes, sort of a bluish tone. And the yellow will make it sort of a little bit of a, it's leaving a little bit of light. This will be the field over here. Try not to make parallels. A little deeper dark somewhere in, these, in this foliage. Always something where the eye can focus a little bit more. There's some little dark that the eye can fix on. Not all the same. Let this run a little bit. It's all right. Go along the shore over here. Same thing. Shoreline is here somewhere. Some little bushes along the shore. A little more neutral than this, so we so we going to reflect it a little bit in the water. Try to leave some kind of glint, just a little glint in the water, some darks in the water under the foliage along this edge of the water. Again, I'll touch the frame line over here a little bit with some something along the edge of the water so we know that's the edge of the water and maybe just a little bit here. We repeat some of these little bushes that are echoed in the water. And even in through here, same thing. This will be trees here, but we still want to have the same thing happening all the way through, a certain amount of repeats of this little a theme of reflections. Different sizes though, touch the frame, soften that a little bit. Since I have this, we'll kind of move through a little bit of this. This is uh, what happened here. My goodness, we didn't get that in time. Okay, there'll be shadows over that anyway, so it doesn't matter too much. Okay, let's see now. I want to do a little bit with this tree give it a little bit of a side plane. And there are, is some red in there too. It's just starting to turn a little bit. So we get, some of the shadows can be reddish. I'll use the side of the brush. Maybe just scumble just a little side plane on this tree. And I can sort of outline it just slightly, little clusters. The down plane's dark and side planes dark and tie the darks together a little bit and maybe I can go back in with a little bit of yellow in that yellow green it's not yellow enough so I get pick up some clean yellow here okay and I'm going to reflect that in the water but not as strongly and a little shadows, which we had before, a little reddish, but not quite as strong, maybe. Very blue. 
blur just a little. And we can even indicate the trunk a little bit here. That's some of this neutral color in the palette here. We can start out with that. And we'll kind of bring this down and sort of curve it a little bit. And let's see, this bush is here. Maybe we could uh, have a cast shadow from that just a little. this is, but we'll make something out of it. Since we have the dark, we'll go back into some of the windows too, just with a little bit of extra dark in here, so it's, it's not just flat. Gives it a little more sparkle. And the side of the chimney. Okay. Maybe now these, these areas are dry. This is dry. Maybe I'll go in and restate uh, the trees just a little bit more. And I have plenty of color on here, so... Uh, just light is coming from this side, so I can restate the sides just a little, give a little feeling of, of something happening in here. And maybe just a little bit of the warmth that we see back here starting, starting quite a bit here with this fall feeling. Of course, a lot of this will be covered but uh, still we want to get the feeling of, of movement through something going on back there, just shapes. And maybe just a little darkening for the side planes of these trees where there won't be a tree here. Maybe this would be interesting if it had a little bit of a side planes on, on the tops of these pine trees. And these I don't want the same height, so I'll maybe, should I raise this one or raise this one? Let's see, this one, I'll raise this one. No, that's further away. I'll just raise this one slightly. All right, and maybe a little darker dark at the base of this mass. Trees along the edge of the woods. Do we get something changing there? So it's not all the same all the way across. This is like a little inlet here. So we can, I can put something back there, some small clumps of trees. This is a tree here, so we won't need much anything there. And the same here. And I can also cut behind the house where I didn't do it before. That little bit of... Uh, there's like a little tree here, maybe, something in the back. Silhouette. And another one here, so we don't... Larger to smaller, gets smaller, goes out of the picture. Little key places where the, there's a down plane up against the, against the light there. This will be a little, little piece of field jutting out. Don't do it the same up here as underneath though. Now, that trunk of the tree I could put in in the water, the reflection of that trunk. So here we have foliage, foliage is in front of it, and maybe just a little bit of the tree here. Just a touch here, but we'll soften that just a little, not too strong. And it's darkest right up against where it goes under the under the foliage, so we'll darken that just a little bit here. So it's not all the same. And just the same here, just a little too. But we don't want that as a main point of interest, so maybe I'll have to make sure my darks over here we're gonna draw your eye to the house. So I can sharpen these up just a little bit on the house, a little bit of the detail one more time here and the little loose shack. Something to draw. I try not to make a dark under another dark. I try to 
drag them over, keep everything just a little bit of oblique, one form oblique to another. Sometimes something reflect in the water, like you could have a little, uh, say, a little stick going, uh, let's see, where can we do it, right here, say, going this way, is reflected in the opposite direction. Could be a little, little thing where there, maybe there's a boat tied up there or something. Okay. Uh, so I guess that's enough here. Let's see what's next then. Okay. Maybe now we'll go with the, the uh, a little bit more on the mountain. I guess maybe that's enough. I think I'll go with the trees now. Start out with the trees. We're going to take a, uh, let's see, yellow ochre, red sienna, cobalt blue, maybe a little French ultramarine blue. We won't go with the darkest dark right away. We'll keep these colors wet, too, so we can go back into them for the other trees. And we'll start with this big one, and we assume everything is pretty, well, pretty dry through here. It won't run too much. Okay. So we'll start here. Going to curve it a little. Maybe you want to leave that cloud showing, which is kind of nice. Come back down through. I'm going to have a light side facing the light. I'll go back into that again, cutting this up dark against the field. Keep that puddle, but not, not so wet it's going to run. If it does run, we have to catch it. A little yellow ochre in there. And we're ignoring the pencil lines. Try to get a little bit of this trunk coming out into the ground. And the same on this side. And this is not changing much. It's almost the same width, just a little bit bigger at the bottom. But this is the, this is the branch that comes out the most, the root. And then I put a little bit of red in that, in the shadows to liven it up a little. And go uh, back into the dark again, just a little more. French Ultra, a lot of French Ultra in here. And a little bit of the first movement dark, just a little dark against the water. Maybe some texture in here. If I want, I could drop in, in some light too. Maybe just a little hint of yellow, but not yellow where there's yellow behind, but maybe yellow up here. Just a little bit, some change in it. So this color bouncing around a little bit. Maybe just a little alizarin in the shadow too. Try to break that edge a little so it's not just hard edged all the way. And but not too red either, so. Okay. And it has these funny little uh, branches that come almost straight out. And I can use that little rigger brush if I can find it here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's see, bigger. It might have fallen down. There it is. Okay. And we have our little puddle here, dark puddle, with our rigger brush. And they start pretty low. They start down maybe about here somewhere, and, and come out in funny little branches. And some of them come from inside. Again, they almost all come straight out, but we won't make it exactly that way. This one comes out right here by this cloud. And uh, let's see, watch the space divisions. Try not to repeat them. Maybe this one is in further, say. And we can put some little accents here for the bark, just a hint of texture because it's up close. Maybe another little one here. That's enough. Maybe one here. Going up. 
to try to vary the direction of these forms too. Uh, then we're going to put the tree, the next tree. We're going to use this little one over here, the double, little double tree. Okay, so we'll use a smaller brush. Maybe I'll use my number 11 sable. Again, French Ultra and uh, French Sienna. A good sized puddle. And let's see, where am I starting? Am I gonna have a little cast shadow? I don't want it the same height as this one, so maybe I'll come. I don't wanna get too close, but maybe I could start here. And let's see, we're gonna go out like this. Try to have it do something different than the other one. And it's sort of going over this way. I'm scooting around that little tree because it's so nice sticking up there. And then it has a little companion one. This, but it sort of goes out a little bit too here, so we'll do that first. And then it has a companion trunk. And let's see, we're gonna separate it in the water so we get the advantage of that little triangular shape and try to vary the spaces as it goes over here and comes and it leans over towards the house and I'm getting a little heavy up there. I didn't want to get that heavy. I'll probably cover that with foliage. But I'll make this just a little heavier anyway. And I'll use the bigger brush to get this in now. More of a puddle, more a little bit more, more liquid, French Ultra. And maybe where that branches out, I'll kind of take the eye away from there. And this one is gonna come down and work its way down towards the house a little bit and sort of branch out a little. This one will go off up into the space, keep plenty of liquid. This needs some kind of a change here, so we'll, we'll go off on this corner just a little bit. We'll cover that with foliage. Let them wiggle. And they're sort of wiggling out to get, a, get out there and each branch is trying to get its own share of the, of the light and the water and the air and the sunshine. So that's probably enough. Then, then we need something. There's not much going on down here, except there's a little, sometimes a little bit of, of bark along there, so it isn't too flat. And then I'll, I can even put some texture in it. I can try a little texture in here with a knife, just a little bit, just so it's not flat. Especially I need it here, though, on the side facing the light, up against the foliage of the trees. And since I put the red in that one, maybe I'll just put a little bit red in here too, in the shadow. I don't know if it'll show up much, maybe just a little. And maybe deeper dark, maybe a little alizarin with French Ultra. On the side pine. Gets a little fatter here because they're coming together. All right, that's enough for that one. And then we got to put two over here. We're gonna take this little tree over here. Instead of using just another big one the same way, try to get some variety. So we're gonna put these in. So I'm keeping these brushes handy that I'm gonna use, and I'm gonna use this uh, a little bit smaller brush. I got a little heavy on that one, so we'll use this one. This is a synthetic brush, a nylon. Works pretty well, gets a nice point. Keep a nice puddle. And uh, starting a little higher, this is higher, so we'll, we're taking these three, go up almost straight, but we won't, we'll kind of curve it a little. We'll go right up through the mountain. We 
They want to vary the size a little bit too. Maybe these aren't quite as thick as the one over there. And at the bottom, they all come to kind of come together. I don't want to spread them apart at the same place. So maybe I'll do it either higher up. Maybe I'll do it higher up. Bring them together. This is a little yellow ochre in there. It's getting a little heavy. Ah, come on, keep them together higher up. And then we'll break it here. Break it higher than the other one. They kind of move together a little. And then the third, the third one, break it even higher or lower, let's see. I'll break it lower. I'll make one do something entirely different right here. Try not to parallel them. Maybe they'll even cross each other. Okay. Okay. I'm going to get the rigger and break these up. Well, they break off into little. Okay, we'll break that so we don't want it to point to the corner, so we'll move it back in. And we'll come up through here. Let's see. Try to break through here. Give it a little side plane. Keep plenty of puddle here. You need the puddle. Side plane dark, side plane dark, side plane dark. I can lay this in. And bring this up through, give it a little side plane, break it up a little. Let's see, where are we around this one? This one kind of goes off this way a little. Kind of goes out of the picture here, connects. And uh, let's see, more side plane. There's going to be some little uh, small tweaks growing up from this and sort of aiming up towards the house a little bit. They have that sort of converging out from it. While we have this, we can lighten it just a little and put some on this little uh, clump of trees. We can see some over there. I do something a little different with this one, so it's maybe it's leaning back the other way just a little bit. I guess I'll move on now uh, to the foliage up above. Uh, so we're going to get a little uh, cobalt blue and cad yellow and a little burnt sienna. Then we'll test it out and see how dark it is. But also we must remember that it's getting into the fall, so a lot of, there'll be kind of a warmth up there too, a lot of them. But maybe the pine needles will be a little darker. We get, let's get it greenish first, and then we'll move into the other. And let's get it a little more of a puddle. And not too, too wet. So we'll Okay, we're going to move down through. We try to leave some of that sky in that nice little cloud we have there. We don't want to lose all that. And they just go in clusters. And they sort of follow the form that they're on of the branch. Maybe I'll get some worms in there, though, because we do have fall. And some of those leaves from this tree are going to have a yellowish tone and orangey, orangey reds. And I'm using this hockey brush. There's that little place I said I was going to cover up, which I will. Okay, I'm really getting into the colors now. And this is greens and reds and yellows. I'm going to touch the frame, follow the form, follow the long axis of the form of the branch so that it sort of moves along with it and flows and has a flow and curves a little bit. And then here and there, I'll darken it just a little more. 
we get just a little more glint with it. Same over here. I think I'm all right here. I want some of these little sparkling leaves. This was that spot I wanted to cover up. I didn't like too much. I can give one clump of dark there. And this, all right, this is okay. And I'll clean the brush. And uh, I'll take this tree. Maybe it's even greener. It's a little more light on it because it's on the sun side, but then there. So let's start out lightly and just scumble lightly. Follow the long axis of the form of these forms converge. Try not to cover the whole mountain. Leave the mountain. Little bits of... Somewhere in that, some deeper darks away from the light. Down planes, dark. Maybe I'll chance a little bit of phthalo blue on that. Just touch the frame. Don't forget to follow the long axis down through a little bit more. No isolated spots. Side plane. And we want to get out, so maybe I hope that light is not going to hold your eye there too much so maybe i'll put just a little cluster of leaves there i didn't want to lose the mountain though just a little of it and follow the form and almost losing that mountain get some yellow in there Have it down here, work it down towards the, just a little bit towards the house for this tree. Okay, that's enough for that. For now, let's say now. Okay. So foreground. Let's see, we're going to put some darks in the foreground here. Let's. We do have the, in our foreground here, we have these uh, ferns. But a lot of them are, are dead now, so we have some greens in here. I could clean it a little bit here, but I think I'll go right into it. Maybe first I'll put the shadows in, the, the cobalt blue. Light is still coming from this side, so we, we're going to get some shadows here from, from the tree. Wow. I cover up some of that foreground that was a little troublesome. And here's a clean spot. I think I should clean my palette just a little. I want to keep the, the puddles. And these needles are falling on me. So we'll pick those up too. A little cobalt blue. Also, this tree has a cast shadow. Important to that cast shadow run right through to this this tree here. Maybe a little. There'll be some shadows over here too. Shadows coming in, leaving some of the sunlight. I don't want to lose that sunlight glint, and a little bit of harmonizing variations on the edges, so it's not all hard edged. I try to vary the shapes so they're not the same. And this will have some shadow coming in from a tree over here. But I don't want light under light, so I decide I want to keep that little sparkle. Maybe I'll pull that one over. And just a little bit of alizarin in there, too. It's too, too flat. I need some repeat of these colors. This will give me a little bit of violet feeling. Don't hit it too many times, so. Light shape uh, coming up through here. Let's see. Okay. Now, my light shape. A little bit from the sky, but now I'm getting it down here, from here to here to here. And maybe I could hush that just a little. 
over there in the water. My light shape now, is it coming from here, moving in through here, coming over here? Now these two are in competition, so I have to decide if I want to keep the land or the water lightest. Maybe I'll get the water subdued just a little and let the land pick it up, but I don't want it all. Get it in a ways. Okay. Maybe just a little more at the house. Maybe I can put that red chimney in. Let's put some red paint here. some red. Maybe I need some red distributed a little bit. All this red around here, maybe maybe first I'll do some yellow flowers. Some of these yellow leaves are very bright. Maybe coming along through here, growing along the shore. Just a little bit over here too, something. So I can run some of this color through. This one will have some, some leaves too. help to carry the eye over a little bit and then some reds red leaves little red leaves falling from the trees a little bit here too something in here all right let me just take a look at the painting from back further to see how my pattern is just a little bit Okay, all right, good, okay. All right, let's make a couple little, little additional changes. Just a little more in the horizontal. I'll take my brush here. Just give a little more accent to this horizontal in the water. Here, it's a little stronger puddle here. more blue here. Let's get a little more water here. Yeah, that's good. Up close. That's good. Up close. Okay, now we have some texture, a little bit more texture in the foreground here. I think this is dry, so we're gonna get just a little bit of the darks to pull the eye up through across here. Maybe I can use my rigger brush a little too here. something growing out of this tree just a little bit here always these little extra pieces coming out little little bits of foliage growing up around the main tree these could take a little bit to have their little stems I guess we did this one pretty much I want to do one little bit of side plane on this uh, 
the foliage in the water. Just a hint of side point here. It sort of repeats it a little. A little variation in this blurred. This is too vertical, so I kind of make this a little bit different here, vary it slightly. I want to do just a little another wash on that on that roof. It's a little, a little bit more of a wash on the roof, just a touch. Okay, so we go back into the roof. Just put a little more color in the roof, just so it's not exactly flat. And I'll bring just a little more color in here too. Just a little bit more of the roof. but it's a little strong, so I'll soften this just a little. Have some red throughout here somewhere here, so it isn't just the one place. And a little extra red over here. Okay. And a little deeper darks here. Don't like those two being exactly the same. And a different size piece. Okay. Okay, we just run some of this red up through here so it's, it has some of that fall feeling color. And maybe not quite as strong with the red, just a little bit blotting it. Uh, just a little front plane on the building, and then I think we're all set. On that little goose shack. Okay. And one little thing interesting, I could just put, erase this, the lights on here just a little. Maybe I'll wait and do that later. Okay. We can pick up some of that light with an eraser. <sighs> okay. I guess that's enough. Maybe spread this red just a little. It's a little bit too much the same width as the red of the house, maybe. And just one more little dab of red, of orange, yellow. some light in here. Okay, well I think that should be enough here. We're just about finished. Sometimes I ask myself, why do I keep coming back here to the scene to try to capture the mystery of, of, the, of nature, of the colors and the values and, and the, the movement of nature? And uh, you know, when I've finished a painting, after I've finished a painting and solved some of the problems of, of designing it and, and capturing the mood, uh, I, I feel that perhaps by understanding uh, these mysteries in nature a little more that I understand myself a little more.